Welcome to the Orchard County and to the North Armagh Club's Shelburne Motors Tandakee 100 for the second of our road racing series. It's early morning, but the paddock buzzing as the riders prepare for scheduled practice. Well, that controversial chicane is causing concern already. Officials and riders already in very serious conversation. The riders adamant they won't race through those bales, that they're actually a further hazard. If you turn in, your wheel is going to be in that track there. Right. Your feet's going to be in that If you get into that bit, Joey, and look to here, you can see. Aye, uh, you can see. You're still going to have that grass. Aye, uh, you're heading straight for the grass. All you see is the very point of the grass. Uh, Harris Healy in the cap there, the man responsible for asking the club to install those bales, Mervyn White from the Northwest 200 offering his advice. A real standoff here. The top riders want to negotiate again. Okay, Corral, walking in. Guns blessed. What exactly have the riders decided to do? Well, we're not here to have a meet with Horace Hilly and see if we can get them to change it or move it out of the road because it's too dangerous the way it is just sitting there. You're coming in on good tar over a rough stuff and you're in a bottleneck trying to get out again. It's pointless. Strong views from Richard, and there's the biggest name of all pointing out just how he feels the chicane must be altered for safe racing. What's the particular concern here? Is it because it's so close to the start? Aye, one of the reasons, and, and really, like the turner is anti road, they have it all burned up, and the surface is bad, and like the two big poles are right in front of us. Like they're making it worse, I think. There is the argument that chicanes are an unnatural thing on roads. Do you share that? I do indeed. Like, I can see why they have them in road racing. Like, you're going to put them in this corner, they have to put them in all the corners, and what's the point? They're quieter corners than this around the bike, and worse ones than that. The debate goes on. Practice abandoned, a three hour delay already. The riders meet. Joey will have plenty to say, I'm sure. You are good. You're only worried about today. You're not worried about the future of road. How do you only matter too? Before you start shouting at me, I'm a rider too. I'm only. <laughs> So the riders and officials still far from happy. But after all of those heated debates, the North Armagh Club's flagship event could at last get underway and three of those controversial bales were being removed. But each race reduced by one lap. They're on the grid for the 125cc Super Kings. Gary Dines having problems now with his machine. But we're almost ready for a five-lap race. Let's hope Gary is. Let's join our race commentator, Stephen Watson. Thank you, Jackie. He has a frantic start for Gary Dines for this time with Gear 100. Just seconds to go until the start of the 125cc race. And a worried, worried look there for Gary Dines. He is on the front row of the grid. If he can get this machine ready alongside Joey Dunlop, and Darren Lindsay, the winner of the Cookstown 100. And yes, Gary Dines will be ready to go. Number three, Joey Dunlop, the king of the road himself, wasn't going to race because of that chicane, but the modifications have been made, and they're away for the first race of the day. And what a great start it is by Joey Dunlop, streaking into an early lead through this very narrow chicane. Second place is Gary Dines. His equipment is obviously working. Down into Marnaku corner and just look at the advantage Dunlop had, but Robert Dunlop's in second, or is he? Darren Lindsay was in third, but right off the outside of Robert Dunlop. Dennis McCulloch there in fourth place. Next stop on the Armagh Road is the quickest part of the circuit for a 125. It's about 130, 135 miles an hour. Top gear into Capra corner, just drop it down a gear. There's a little bump in the road, and the rider almost jumps out of his seat. Perfect style for Joey Dunlop. There's a little bump, and away goes Dunlop, massive advantage. Into Cooley Hill Cross, first gear corner, nice and careful here. And away onto the Market Hill Road, and the run to home and Bell's Crossroads. Joey Dunlop in scintillating form at the time with Gear 100. Darren Lindsay's in second, Dennis McCulloch in third, Robert Dunlop's in fourth, and Gary Dines has dropped out of our picture altogether. So those problems that Dines was experiencing have obviously reoccurred. Dunlop in first, Lindsay followed by McCulloch at Bell's Crossroads, Joey Dunlop looking for his 18th win at the Tandra Gee 100 and he's on on to get it. Through the start finish goes Joey Dunlop, our most successful road racer ever. Robert Dunlop back down in fourth place, he's being caught by Mark Curtin in fifth. So 
We'll tunnel up in fourth and third is Lindsay into that chicane. Flicks it through behind him, Dennis McCulloch. And away out into the country, but at the front still, it's your man, Joey Dunlop, at Marlequeu corner. That's a first gear corner. Lindsay's in second still, but McCulloch's right behind him. Well, Dennis McCulloch mounting a big challenge here. But at the front at Cabra, it's Joey Dunlop, and there's absolutely no stopping him. No stopping Dunlop, but Dines' race is over. He's had enough, and a disappointing start to the day for him. Joey Dunlop looks behind him, and Darren Lindsay actually looks to be closing the gap. Well, a Hannah's bed. Dunlop will have to get on the gas because Lindsay's definitely closing, and he's losing Dennis McCulloch. So Lindsay, the winner of the Cookstown 100, certainly isn't finished yet. He's having a great season, and he's got the master in his sights. So Lindsay definitely is reeling in Joey Dunlop. Up through the gears now and through the start finish onto the final lap. Can Darren Lindsay mount a challenge? That's the new chicane. Oh, it's so narrow through there. Well, the riders don't like it, and you can see absolutely why. Robert Dunlop back and forth. He's got Mark Curtin right behind him. Yes, he's there, Robert. At Bell's Crossroads. Oh, look at 17. 17 there, Trevor Ritchie muscling out Darren Burns. Well, wasn't that a brave move? On to Cabra Strait, Dunlop still leads, Lindsay's in a clear second, 135 miles an hour for these bikes. Here comes Dunlop, top gear, drops it down one, and Lindsay's right behind him, can he catch Dunlop, that's the question. Joey Dunlop won his first race at Tandragee in 1971. His last win was in this 125cc race five years ago in 95. And he also holds the fastest lap at Tandragee, so he loves this circuit. Joey Dunlop looking for his 119th national road race win. What a record that is. Darren Lindsay's trying to stop him, but I don't think he can catch him. And as then Dunlop goes through, Lindsay goes through. He's on the gas trying to close in Dunlop. At Bell's Crossroads, you can hear the applause for your man, Joey Dunlop. No mistakes from him, and an excellent race win. Takes the checkered flag, little wheelie from Darren Lindsay. Good second place for him. In third, it's Dennis McCulloch. And no doubt, all of these three men will be doing battle at the Isle of Man TT for the ultra lightweight class. And of course, so will this man, Robert Dunlop, fourth here today, and looking for his sixth Isle of Man TT victory. Mark Curtin takes fifth place, and by Guinea sixth there, Nigel Moore, a good sixth place for him. And this 125cc race, 17 is Darren Burns. He'll take the seventh place. Oh, will he? Oh, will he? Well, Trevor Ritchie right up the outside of him at the start finish line. And Ritchie gets revenge on Darren Burns. And hardly enough, you know, had a good run that 125. The, the 125s, uh, a lot of the riders weren't going to go out. Why did uh, you change your mind? Well, I think everybody changed their mind at the last minute. Like, the club was in difficulties. If they didn't, the spectators was in difficulties. You can see around the track, it's packed near the match. So I'm glad they had good. Are you a wee bit happier with the chicane now? Oh, the set I must up? They brought Anna back and it definitely helped it. You know, it's readable now. Can't complain. I'm uh, leading Super Kings Championship. Um, don't know many points have been now. The sort of closest one is a short circuit rider, so I'm quite happy with that. Darren happy to lead the championship, but on the day he couldn't beat the old maestro Joey Dunlop, who took the victory. In third place, it was Dennis McCullough, followed by Robert Dunlop, Mark Curtin, and Nigel Moore. But that chicane's still the big talking point here at Tandragee, and safety boss Harris Healy believes he stood his ground. Do you regard that as a victory today over the riders? No, it, it's not a case of being a victory over the riders. There seems to be an element coming into the sport of them and us with riders and officials. Now, you know, that is silly, in my view, because we're all trying to promote and get keep the sport going. Yes, riders will have a different point of view from officials because they will not see the negotiations that we have to have with government departments, with insurers, um, even if and when we have a fatality, going and attending to coroner's inquest. A writer doesn't see that end of the sport, that very bad end of the sport and therefore will not have the understanding of them. Well, some controversial thoughts there, but at least we have racing. And now it's the first of the open races, the Lambert and Butler Challenge, incorporating the Tato 250cc race. Here's Stephen again. Richard Britton on the front row of the grid, alongside his old sparring partner, Adrian Archibald, the Lambert and Butler champion from 1999. 
Bike 77, the Makadu Kawasaki of Ryan Farquhar, having a pretty good season is Farquhar. Now the race being run in two waves, the first wave is the Lambert and Butler Challenge, the second wave is the Tato 250 race, and there's the main man, Gary Dines, last year's 250 Irish champion. Dennis McCulloch, the 250cc winner at Cookstown, will have something to say about Dines' challenge today though. The Lambert and Butler is ready for the off Yule Duncan bike four, 18's Britain and 13 Archibald, and what a spluttering dreadful start there by Yule Duncan. Well into this chicane, Britain it is who leads, Archibald second, Farquhar is third and it looks like Adrian McFarland in fourth place. And the weather conditions are certainly getting worse here at Tandragee. The front row of the 250s, two is Dennis McCulloch, one is Stephen Thompson and six is Gary Dines. Well, Stephen Thompson creeping off the line a little early there. But at the front is Gary Dines, bike number six, followed by Thompson and third is Dennis McCulloch. The rest of the 250s squeeze through that chicane. Well, it's the narrowest chicane I think I've ever seen. At Cooley Hill Cross, it's Richard Britton who leads Adrian Archibald. The Lambert and Butler challenge will be fought out between these two men, Britton on the Yamaha, Archibald on the Honda. They accelerate away up the Market Hill Road. In the 250s, well, look who's hit the front of the 250s. It's Dennis McCulloch. He's got past Gary Downs through the rain. The big bikes. Britain still leads Archibald, but look at Archibald, tries to go up the outside of Richard Britain. The two bikes almost touch at Bell's Crossroads. Oh, he's in the dirt, Archibald, and Britain holds him off. Well, that's going to be a cracking battle. Adrian McFarland is in third place. We're on board with him. You can see the worsening weather conditions. Up to about 120 miles an hour here, then breaking down to go through this absolutely horrible chicane. 70 miles an hour. Navigates it perfectly and accelerates into the countryside now. And at Bell's Crossroads, well, Duncan made an awful start and he's made a mess of that as well. Has to turn his bike. Well, a mistake there by Yule Duncan. Just left the braking too late. At Marlacou Corner, Richard Britton still leads Adrian Archibald. Great care taken there because the camber falls against the rider. They have to be careful squeezing on the gas. Britton leads Archibald. And in the 250, Dennis McCulloch leads, but Gary Dines is making a big challenge into Marlacou. Can he get around the outside of McCulloch? Not in these conditions. You can see how gingerly they're taking it there. McCulloch followed by Dines. In the big race, it's Richard Britton, who's still in front of Adrian Archibald, about 130 miles an hour, even in these wet conditions. Britton, Archibald. And there's 70, Victor Gilmore, the Irish Clubman's champion of 1999. Behind him is Ryan Farquhar. On board with Richard Britton. He's at Castle Corner. You have to be very careful. That's the corner where Joey Dunlop crashed last year. You've got walls on one side and hedges on the other. This is pure road racing, and this is adrenaline rushing stuff. Superb pictures from Richard Britton's onboard camera. He leads this Lambert and Butler challenge. He's up to about 120 miles an hour now. Breaks down to go through Joey's dip and on to Cooley Hill Cross. 29 years of age, Richard Britton from Enniskillen and looking to take the Lambert and Butler honours here today. 77, Ryan Farquhar. Well down the field at the moment, but he's got past Victor Gilmore. So Farquhar's past Gilmore. But who's leading the Tato 250? Oh, it's Gary Dines. Dines has got past Dennis McCulloch. So McCulloch's been relegated to second place. On the run for home, the last lap. Richard Britton is still in front of Adrian Archibald. Through Cabra. And in third place at the moment, well, it's Eddie Sinton, bike five. What a cheer this would get if he can get on the podium. The local man from Tanragi. Great ride by Sinton. Bike seven, Adrian McFarland. We're on board with McFarland. He's at Cooley Hill Cross. Nice and easy. And now accelerating out the Market Hill Road and the run to home. And at the front already at Bell's Crossroads, Richard Brennan. Yes, he's still in front of Archibald. Last chance for Archibald. He tries out the outside. Has Britton gone too tight? Well, Archibald's up the inside of him now. And Archibald's been a great challenge. He's going to take the checkered flag. Oh, splash and grab victory by Archibald. He can hardly believe it. Eddie Sinton takes third place. And that will get a massive round of applause. <laughs> Shake of the fist from Sinton. And in the 250s, bike six there. 
Gary Dines will take the checkered flag and the race win. So Dines is the winner of the Tate 0250. Comes home alongside Gary Jess. And Stephen Thompson takes second. So Thompson has got ahead of this man, Dennis McCulloch, who takes third in the 250. But there's your one, two, three in the big race. Actually never got in front until the last corner. As so I say, it was pretty slippy conditions. I followed Richard most of the way. He couldn't really go off the line, so just pleased to get him there at the end. What a good dice with your old sparring partner here. Oh, definitely. Very good race. Richard, uh, probably a wee bit disappointed you didn't take the checkered flag. Ah, oh, no, not disappointed at all. The back marker was in there and I didn't break as late as it was and it was too tight in because I thought he was coming up the inside. But he had time to line me up, you know, when I went in too tight, had it way out wide and he got the inside. He had it. Fair, fair, fair news. I would say you two men are going to see quite a lot of each other this season. I would say so. Back in 88 again. <laughs> I'm sure they will. A great season of rivalry in store for all of us here in BBC Television Sport. But first blood to Adrian in the Lambert and Butler, Britain caught on the very last corner. Third was Eddie Sinton, followed by Gary Dines. He took the Tato 250cc honours. Stephen Thompson was fifth, Adrian McFarlane sixth. Back on the grid, plenty of frantic action there as the teamwork on the rear wheel of Adrian Archibald's bike for the Regal 600cc race. These are always anxious moments for the pit crews. They're under pressure to get it absolutely right. Nothing amiss, though. And Adrian, there he is, certainly not concerned. Beside him on the grid, that man Britain, another great battle in store. Let's rejoin Stephen Watson. Ryan Farquhar, a winner at Tandragee in 1996 in the Support 400 class. And Gary Jess, also a support winner last year on the Shimmel Yamaha. He's also a former Ulster motocross champion. There's the two heavyweight contenders, Britain and Archibald. So the bikes are ready for the 600 race, and it's Adrian McFarland, bike seven, who gets the best start. McFarland leads the 600s, but Britain squeezes him out into the chicane. Well, that was a cracking move. McFarland second, and Archibald is in third place. Accelerating up to 140 miles an hour. This is Moss Depp, Britain, McFarland, Archibald, and then Farquhar. That's your race order. Next stop is Marlacou Corner. And Britain's opened up an even bigger lead. McFarland still in second, Archibald third, and Farquhar fourth. But just look at the pink machine of Ryan Farquhar. He's the bravest man on the brakes and forces Archibald out wide. Farquhar takes the third place. Great move by him. Britain leads. In second, it's McFarland. And at Cabra, this is the fastest part on the circuit, 150 miles an hour, up to 160. Drop it down two gears here on the big bike, and carefully around the right-hander. On to lap two. Oh, and Adrian Archibald's in second. Archibald's got past Farquhar and McFarland. Moved up to second place, and he's got his eyes firmly set on the race leader, Richard Britton. At Hannah's Bend now. Round up to about 120 miles per hour. Onto the new road surface. Britain still holds off Archibald. Here's the battle for third place. McFarland, Farquhar, and look at Gary Jess. Well, he's mounting a big, big challenge as Gary Jess. Bike five is Eddie Sinton. At Bell's Crossroads, Richard Britton was outgunned by Adrian Archibald in the last race on the last lap. And he may have gone a little wide again as Richard Britton because Archibald is squeezing on the par. Well, it's going to be the race into the ball neck of the chicane. And Archibald's done it again. Well, take that, Richard Britton. Adrian Archibald is way in front now. And at Marlacou Corner, Richard Britton will have to pull out everything if he's going to catch the man of the meeting so far, Adrian Archibald. On to the Armagh Road goes Archibald, and he's opening up a big advantage over Britton. At Cabra, Archibald even further in front of Richard Britton. The battle for third is between Gary Jess, Yule Duncan and Ryan Farquhar. Adrian McFarland has dropped out of the picture, and it's Gary Jess who's in the third place at the moment. At Castle Corner, these three men are looking for the podium spot. Eddie Sinton there, back in about seventh place at the moment. Archibald at the start finish. Richard Britton with a little wheelie, but he's got a lot of work to do if he's going to catch Archibald on the Dowd Honda. In third place, Gary Jess still holding off Yule Duncan and Ryan Farquhar. So it'll be a race to the flag to see who can get that third place. Accelerating here up to about 120 miles an hour. Still going through this chicane at 70 miles an hour. 
And nice to see the big crowds here at Tamragi this year. Lost it on the last lap. Edwin Archibald is a comfy mile ahead of Richard Britton. So Archibald looks set to take his second win of the day. Cabra, Archibald just needs to cruise home nice and safely. Never won a Tandrigi before until today. The battle for third place, 150 miles an hour, and it's you, Duncan, who's in front of Gary Jess. Duncan, who had a couple of wins at the Southern 100 last year, is in third at the moment. Farquhar's dropped back, and Gary Jess is right behind Duncan. Next up, Castle Corner. Duncan, oh, a wee bit wide, but holds off Gary Jess, then Farquhar, McFarland, and Eddie Sinton. That's your race order. At the front, Cooley Hill Cross. Adrian Archibald is certainly on his way to another race when looks over his shoulder and there's nobody behind you within sight. Richard Britton is still in second, Neil Duncan third, Gary Jess is fourth, Farquhar fifth, sixth is McFarland and seventh is Eddie Sinton. So Jess and Duncan, well what a good result it would be for either of these men looking for a podium finish. And his bed, Duncan poised right behind Neil Duncan, then it's Farquhar. At the front, Deirdre Archibald for the last time around Bell's Crossroads. The race winner and the second of the day goes to Archibald. Richard Britton there in second place. Good result for him. But who will it be in third place? Will it be Duncan? Will it be Jess? These two men side by side. Oh, Jess has made a mess of it. Duncan certainly got it. Or has he? Or oh, he's got a little wide. And Jess squeezes on the throttle. Oh, he's stolen it. What a steal by Gary Jess. Slap in the face for you, Duncan, from Gary Jess. 74 there is Martin Finnegan. Martin Finnegan, oh, he's down! Martin Finnegan has crashed at Bell's Crossroads. Well, thankfully, nothing too serious. Pride dented probably more than the machine. And there's the race winner, Adrian Archibald, and he tells the second-place man, Richard Britton, exactly how he did it. So, another win for Adrian Archibald, the 600cc Dard Honda, clear of everyone in the Regal race. Britain again second, Gary Jess was third, followed by Ewell Duncan, Ryan Farquhar and Adrian McFarland. Now, there's a familiar face, and how the fans would have loved to have seen Philip McCallan in action here, winner of the feature race last year, of course. Now retired, but a very interested spectator at what is his home event, and he had his views on that chicane. Things like chicanes, and it, it makes it more into track style riding. If uh, we put them in everywhere, and you know, people come to watch road racing to see high speed work. And uh, we've had a disappointment this morning here with with the trouble over the chicane causing the delays. And I think a lot of people went home. And uh, at the minute, we just don't need that with road racing. Do you think if the riders don't like a certain aspect of the track and they want to change, do you think that their opinion should uh, overrule and the chicane should disappear? Well. I think it's definitely got to be listened to. I've spoke to a lot of riders this morning here, and uh, I mean, I don't know exactly all the, the, the specifications, whatever, but the majority of the riders feel no, they weren't consulted on this chicane. And I mean, as a rider, obviously a one-off kind of one opinion, but it's, if you can get a group of opinions and ideas, it's a much better way to resolve something. Food for thought there. Officials and riders really must get together if we're to avoid the confusion of this morning. The sports image has suffered enough. It's back to the track now. They're already warming up those thoroughbred machines for the feature MTC Tandragee 100. We can guess perhaps who'll be setting the pace here again. But let's follow the action with Stephen. On the front row of the grid, Ryan Farquhar on the Kawasaki. Gary Dines is out on a 500cc Yamaha. Last piece of advice for him. Seven is Adrian McFarland. He's carrying our camera in this race. And Adrian Archibald, quick photograph for him. Looking for a hat-trick, of course. The only other two men to do that, Philip McCallan and Joey Dunlop in 92 and 93. So Adrian Archibald is on the front row. He's got Richard Britton to his right and Ryan Farquhar to his left. And Farquhar's got a great start. Farquhar in the Kawasaki leads the MTC Tanrugi 100. Archibald's in second. Britton's in third. Oh, and Britton's been forced out wide. Britton goes wide of the chicane. Well, that controversial chicane causing all sorts of problems there. Here's exactly what happened. Bike 18, Richard Britton nearly on the grass. Had to go to the right-hand side. And so too did Gary Dines on bike six. 
second group gets ready. Pike 11, Gary Chairs, but it's Pike 127. Barry Maguire who gets the whole shot. Former Irish Clubman's champion. Jess in second. Through the chicane. The bike's very, very powerful and accelerating into the country. Already at Marlacu corner, breaking down from about 130 miles an hour. Into first gear, Ryan Farquhar, bike 77. And then it's Adrian Archibald, followed by Richard Britton, and then it's Adrian McFarland. Good race shaping up here. And Archibald trying to make a big challenge on Ryan Farquhar. Archibald is trying to get past Farquhar, and he's done it. Archibald leads the MTC Tandra Gear 100. Farquhar's in second, and Richard Britton is in third place. And here they come side by side again. Surely Farquhar can try a move here. Archibald out of the seat. Farquhar in second. Britain's in third, but he is pushing Ryan Farquhar. Second wave, still Barry Maguire at Marlacu with Gary Jeff behind him. And Darren Lindsay goes into third place. Well, Darren Lindsay on the 250 Honda. We're on board with Richard Britton. Richard Britton has got Ryan Farquhar in front of him, breaking down into Castle Corner. Oh, and Britton gets up the inside of Farquhar, so Britton is in second place. You can see Adrian Archibald in front of him, accelerating away into the distance. At Cooley Hill Cross, Adrian Archibald with Richard Britton in second. Then it's Ryan Farquhar. Archibald looks back, you can see Richard Britton, and Britton, of course, is trying to thwart Archibald from notching up that hat trick. Britain looking for his first win of the day. Oh, second wave now, and it's Darren Lindsay who's got in front of Barry Maguire and Gary Jess. So Darren Lindsay really is trying hard. Great ride by Lindsay on the 250. Hannah's bent, Adrian Archibald. Richard Britton in behind him, little Willie from Britain as he squeezes on the throttle. Ryan Farquhar goes through, Dennis McFarland. And 51 there, 51 looks like Jimmy Courtney. Jimmy Courtney on the Ducati. So Courtney is really trying hard. Jimmy Courtney, nice to see him back in the saddle this year after the crash of the Isle of Man. And he's trying hard to catch these two men at the front. Archibald and Britton up to about 120 miles an hour, then down through the brakes into this narrow chicane. They still go through it pretty quick to me. Back down the field, bike 70, that's Victor Gilmore. Well, I make Gilmore down at about 10th place at the moment. Colin Rogers is with him, and Neil Duncan's there as well. So they're having their own private little battle. Lap three, Adrian Archibald into Marlacu. Richard Britton is sticking to him like glue. Archibald can't get away from Richard Britton. Farquhar, 77, he's in fourth place at the moment. In behind him, well, it looked like Gary Dines. Good ride from Dines, and two is Dennis McCulloch on a 250. And this man, Darren Lindsay, is setting a blistering pace. He's in the second wave, but at the moment on corrected time, he's up to fifth. So Lindsay is in fifth place. Well, what a cracking performance by him. Cabra, Archibald, looks to be getting away from Richard Britton just a little bit. Frightening through there, it really is. We're on board with McFarland, who's got Gary Dines right behind him. At least he had Dines behind him, because Dines has gone up the inside of McFarland, so he moves up a place. Julie Hill Cross, Britain is still there. Has he got anything left? Can he stop Adrian Archibald? That is the main question. And in third place, it's Courtney. Jimmy Courtney has moved up to third place. Well, he holds the race record here at Tandragui and turning in his best performance of the season. There is no doubt about that. Farquhar, Dines, and McFarland all through as well. And 36, Darren Lindsay. He's at Cooley Hill as well. And he's still in fifth place on corrected time. Darren Lindsay. That Hannah's Ben. Look who's in front, Adrian Archibald, of course. Richard Britton is still in our picture, but Archibald's getting away from him. It's quick round there, about 120 miles per hour. Amazing stuff. Dines, McFarland, Farquhar, and then Dennis McCulloch. And isn't this a super ride on a 250 from McCulloch? A 
And we're on board with the Adrian McFarland. Where would you get pictures like this going about 130 miles an hour? He's got Farquhar tucked right in behind him in his slipstream. Dennis McCulloch is in behind Ryan Farquhar. McFarland on the road down into Bell's Crossroads. On the brakes, Farquhar. And just look at McCulloch on the outside. Well, look at this move from McCulloch. We're looking right into his visor. And he goes past Farquhar, touching him as well on the way past. But on the drive to the chicane, Farquhar, of course, has the more power because Farquhar's on a 750 and McCulloch's on a 250. Looking back down the field, Mike Five and he sent it. Well, sent it down at about 10th place. At least he was because his race is now over. Disappointment for Eddie Sinton. On to lap four, Adrian Archibald, and I can tell you that Archibald has set the fastest lap of the day on lap three, 101.73 miles per hour. So Archibald really turning up the pace on this man, Richard Britton, and Archibald is definitely getting away from Britton. Jimmy Courtney, bike 51, solid, comfortable ride for Courtney. He's in third place. Six is Dines, he's in fifth. Sixth is Farquhar, and just ahead of them is Adrian McFarland. That's on the road, of course. Archibald leads on the road with a massive advantage, but Darren Lindsay, bike 36, is in fifth place on corrected time. Richard Britton is second through Cabra. Now here's Farquhar and Dines McFarland, remember, just ahead of them on the road. There's Dennis McCulloch. We're on board with Britton. Britton still with Archibald in front of him. Round Castle Corner, you have to be careful there. You can see the dangers on either side of the road. Well, the picture quality mightn't be good here, but the speed certainly is. And Britton accelerating up to about 120, 130 miles an hour. He hits fifth gear along this road. The little cameras on these machines may be temperamental, but they do get bumped and bounced all over the place. Richard Britton providing the armchair view for us. And where would you get pictures like it? At Curly Hill Cross, Adrian Archibald has completely lost sight of Richard Britton. Well, Archibald is on slick tires, Britton's on intermediate, so perhaps that may be the problem. Gary Dines with Ryan Farquhar and Adrian McFarland. These three men still doing battle, and Dennis McCulloch's hanging in there as well. Archibald at Bell's Crossroads. Round he goes, and through the start-finish. There's Richard Britton still in second place. And remember, Gary Dines, Adrian McFarland and Ryan Farquhar are still all jostling for position. There they are, it's Dines who leads the group. Then it's McFarland and then Farquhar into the chicane. Through goes McFarland, oh, he's off. McFarland has crashed. He's clipped the chicane on the way through. And Adrian McFarland lies by the side of the road. Hopefully, he's not badly injured. Here's exactly what happened. Farquhar was behind him. McFarland clipped the bail. Maybe it was a brake lever, but whatever happened, he's come off at high speed, and he lies in the grass. Well, off for some attention. He's up and walking, pointing to someone, showing his disgust at the chicane. Well, earlier in the day, he said he absolutely hated the new controversial chicane, and unfortunately, it's proved to be his downfall. On the run to home, though, Adrian Archibald. It looks as if it's going to be a famous day for him. On the run home to a hat-trick. Remember, Philip McCallum did it in 92. Joey Dunlop did it in 93. Courtney's in third place. It would be great to see him on the podium. Farquhar back down the field. He's in fourth at the moment. Good ride by Farquhar. On Cabra. Here comes Adrian Archibald, head buried behind the bubble. Through he goes, nice and safely. Richard Britton on the Yamaha. Second place for him. And there's Gary Dines with the 500. Dines down in fifth place at the moment. Dennis McCulloch on bike two. He's at eighth at present. Excellent ride on the 250. Four is Yule Duncan on the 600. He's down in tenth at the moment. And of course, it's Archibald. The man from Balamoney leading the open race on board with Richard Britton at Cooley Hill Cross. Squeezing on the par now up the Market Hill Road on the run for home. Has to settle for second place again to his main rival Adrian Archibald unless Archibald makes a mistake or has a problem. Richard Britton. Well, high-speed pictures again from Britain. Gary Dines on the 500. Little look over the shoulder. 
I sound off that 500cc machine. And here is Darren Lindsay. Well, this is a corking ride. Lindsay in fifth place. He's moved up to fifth again. But Edwin Archibald takes the applause at the front. He takes his third win of the day. Edwin Archibald is the winner of the Tandrake 100. Richard Britton takes second. No wins for him today, but looking forward, no doubt, to the Isle of Man CT. Like all our local riders who are expecting big performances on the island, James Courtney crashed there last year, but he's back this week. And remember, you can see all the TT action here on BBC. First programme, a preview programme, is this Friday evening. Gary Downs loves the Isle of Man. He's looking for a podium finish this season. Excellent performance today. And Dennis McCulloch, wouldn't it be nice to see him get a race win on the Isle of Man? Although this man, Darren Lindsay, is one of my favourites in the ultra lightweight class. Good performance on the 250 today. The crowds have enjoyed the racing at Tadraghi. The riders may have hated the new controversial chicane, but the day has been safe and a happy one for Adrian Archibald. Well, please, like this. Just got the break there at the start and was just keeping an eye where Richard was and just seemed to pull a wee gap and just settled in then and just kept it steady. You seem to uh, really make uh, a lot of ground on him after the third, fourth lap. Well, I could see, you know, it wasn't far behind. I was just trying to make a break so that I could make it easier towards the end. And we just seemed to get three or four seconds, just what we needed. And just kept it steady. Well, after a very confusing start to the day, you must be absolutely delighted at this hat trick. Yeah, that's right. It's been a good day's racing, apart from the controversy at the start, but yeah, well pleased. But you still don't like that you can? That's not too bad. <laughs> Richard, uh, very interesting device there, ignoring the chicane. Was that some sort of protest? Uh, no, there was no way I was going to go through it with two abreast, so I said, oh, well, I'll just sit in here and slot into it and went through it in the first place. Um, no, after the second lap, he didn't. He had the slick on the back, and I had an intermediate, and just started to go off. And I was getting big slides down the back, and I just, I said, I looked around and seen nobody was there, and just settled for a second. During the week there, this last ten days, we've changed the gear, change to the right hand side. So I've no nothing on the left hand side at all, with a thumb brake and a right hand gear change. So I've been out a couple of times there, but it'll take I suppose half a dozen times just to get the get it sorted out. It's, Never rode by a right hand gear change, just we used to do that 30 years ago, so that's the way I have to do it now. But hopefully, as, as the year goes on, we'll get a bit fitter and get up there. It gives me a bit of incentive. Great to see James back on the podium. He's had a couple of disappointing years, but there's no doubting the talent of the Crumlin Rider.